What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I don't know if you guys realize it, but we are exactly four weeks away from the first night of the draft. And I've got my buddy, Game Time Brian. What's up, Game Time? Mark Holmes, what's going on, my man? How man, I see you're working hard in the shop. Man, I, I'm I'm living the dream, dog. I'm I'm truly living the dream. I've got the red brick house that we're working on like crazy. You know, we got uh, uh, electricity in there, so I got lights so I can see what the hell awesome, I'm doing. Man. I got freaking the cable company was there yesterday, and now I have internet there, so I can actually start live streaming from there, and it won't take me three hours to upload a damn video when I'm down there working. And I even got the water line in there, although they have to come set a meter. I like and the I, old guy who comes and visits, man. He's got he's a oh, he's, of knowledge. Oh, man. man. Well, I, I can't wait for him to come back again because now you don't have to worry about him falling through the floors and stuff. <laughs> but um, – <laughs> We got about two months, and I'm trying to see if I can get this thing done and actually be able to live in there when I'm down there working and stuff. So it's it's really exciting. So thanks for asking on that one. Man, that's awesome. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hit the road, man. I, I'm literally like ready to like pack up the car and head to Kansas City right it's now. It's starting to hit me, man. It's starting to hit me, especially last night doing a – a little round table. We mm -hmm. did the first round mock, and I, a couple of the guys are like, man, I really wish I was going with you guys. I'm like, oh, you know, I can't everybody's, wait. everybody's excited, so I'm, I'm getting there. You know, I learned how to pace myself. You know, well, I I, I, I'm working on trying to make sure that we can bring the best live coverage that we can. I, I'm, this is literally right here, guys. This is basically going to be my portable studio. Only thing I have to add to this is my cell phone. And a couple of mics and mic cables. And this is a mic mixer uh, with sound effects. It's my backup battery. I'm using my cell phone as a camera to put up. And that's a notebook computer. So we're going to be able to try and live stream. Oh, and I've even got a, a uh, Wi-Fi box. So we're going to be trying to live stream from the draft. I don't know where we're going to be when we get there. Yeah, um, I'm excited, man. This if we'll be in the crowd or whatever. Draft, you know, uh, so you would know more than I the feel of the room and where we could possibly set up. But I'm actually, sure that would be out. Jay Tuck. And interestingly enough, I met Jay Tuck in Chicago at the draft. And I actually had a video with him and Joe Boo. But unfortunately, it was lost on my other channel. So it'll be nice to see Jay Tuck again. Uh, Jay Tuck's doing some great things up there in Kansas City. All Kansas right. So City. you are Kansas City. Okay. Here I come. Don't don't tell your wife they got the pretty little girls and that you're gonna get one. <laughs> no, <not laughs> dude, dude, don't 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 play that song. So you have been digging deep into the draft a lot more than me, and I you know I, I I just hate mock drafts because to me it seems like it's so much work to put out bullshit. It doesn't matter. There's too many well, variables in there to actually think that it's actually going to happen. And when you look at, you know, some of these draft gurus and stuff like uh, Mike Maylock, you know, who, oh, he's a draft guru. He goes to the Raiders and you, you look at the moves that he made and how he literally ran that team in the ground. Right. Yeah. Well, this is what you got to take out of mock drafts. And this, I know the fantasy yeah, people will know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When you do these mock drafts, it's not going to be what happens. You know it's not. But yeah. There's a reason why your NFL front offices do mock drafts. Starting this week, Similar. They're, they're making their board. And what it does is you start to say, okay, and that's what I think the Cowboys do best. You know, yeah, it's best player uh, – like available, but it's groupings. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to identify. We know right now that the running backs go 15 deep as starters in oh, this league. Okay, I think I got it now. Yeah, yeah. I think, go. you know, I, I rem remember Matthew Broderick movie War Games? Yes. Yeah. So they had like all you know the 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 Whopper oh, the Whopper computer yeah. there <laughs> that was playing all the simulations of yeah. the different wars and so you're basically saying that you know we're just learning all of the different scenarios and how it could fall and what we should do is that, that way on draft you only have so much time you saw the Vikings blow was it back to back years they didn't yeah have, yeah they slipped in the draft and mm -hmm. they couldn't make up their mind you need to know. 
Who okay. You, who, yeah, who you're targeting, and you know, and if they go, you need to have a, like a number two option. So you know, it's okay. just good. Okay, I hear you. All right, so this point counterpoint here, and I don't know if you are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. <sighs> the mock drafts, for some reason, keep having um, Bijan Robinson going to the Dallas Cowboys, dropping to the Dallas Cowboys. And my point is, is I don't want to draft a running back in the first round. The reason why I believe he's dropping is because teams recognize taking a running back early on doesn't win you Super Bowls. We took Zeke fourth. He got great numbers, did wonderful things. But here we are after paying him. You know, taking a, a basically a, a eleven million over two years dead hit, so that way we didn't insult him by saying you need to take a pay cut. He goes out and gets insulted because nobody wants him. I look at Derrick Henry, great numbers, exciting to watch. Num- number one. Oh well, okay. But still, I'm just saying, great I'm running backs. You know. Okay, my, my bad, my bad. Okay, all right. But but you you feel what I'm saying that having a I great do. running back doesn't mean okay. Barkley, high draft pick. Yes. What have I the Giants do. done with him? One playoff win. Well, yeah. I I mean, I don't think you can isolate Barkley. I think it's what they didn't do on the offensive line. You know, you have more than one pick. It's just, you know. Oh, wait, hold it. You're saying because of what they didn't do on the offensive line. So you actually have just brought it back full circle. Mm -hmm. Are you better off getting an elite running back, the best guy out there, or are you better off actually taking care of another position that's more relevant, like, say, the offensive line? Well, it's funny you say that. If we're taking Mike McCarthy's, own words that he wants to take the air out of the ball. Now, now, like we can laugh about that comment. Bullshit! I'm sorry. Excuse me. If you take that seriously, then um, I think they both go hand in hand. What we got to be very careful is do not run away from a great player because he's a running back. Would I would tend to say top 10 to 15 running backs in the draft because we all know there's only about 15 to 18 sometimes it stretches to close to 20 first round talented players now we all know there's more than 18 the first round draft picks so we're drafting 26 mark i if for some strange reason that Bijan he drops to us at 26 um, you have to run that card in, okay? Steve Avila, that's my personal. I think that's who they're going to take, regardless of who's on the board. I'm saying me, you have to take him. You cannot allow, and I know what you're saying, but this is the end of a first-round situation. You, you know, here's my point. As I look at the landscape here, I see my Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, Running back by committee. Isaiah Pacheco. I, 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 I see the Seven Eagles round. running back by committee. They, they, and, and they were like, okay, Miles Sanders, great season. See, you wouldn't want to be you. I'll take the compensatory pick. To me, I look at differently. And I know people are going to say you crazy and that, you know. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. It they, is. Okay. <laughs> but to me, tight end is more important than running back in the NFL today. Name the last. No, hold, hold, wait, but just, just listen to me. That went off, though. That's but, okay, what all right, of. okay. I'm just using we that as a hypothetical. Okay, I'm just using that as a hypothetical. I'm just saying, you brought it up. Okay, but, okay, but there's other positions out there besides just tight end. But I'm bringing this up because who's more important on the Eagles, Dallas Goddard or Miles Sanders? Dallas Goddard. 
Okay. Who's more important on um, Kansas City? Uh, Kelsic? Absolutely. Or it's absolutely. one of their many running backs? It's absolutely. Kelsic. Who's more important on San Francisco? McCaffrey or Kittle? It, well, it's Kittle. Okay. So, I agree. And we're. I would say this. Why are we saying that that option isn't already on our team, Mark? You saw what Ferguson did and Hendershot did without Dalton Schultz. Ferguson okay. had six touchdowns yes. and 700 yards. Mm-hmm. He was relegated to one or two throws a game maybe when Schultz mm-hmm. came back. He, he, Schultz came back. You know, Dak was trying to feed his boy. He was getting all the looks. I'm telling you now, we have that guy already on the team. I'm all for it. See, that's the thing. I think people are over-evaluating Dalton Schultz, and I think my theory is correct based on he didn't get squata on the market. He got mm-hmm. a one-year, $9 million deal. Yeah, He's probably smacking himself in the face because we offered him a three-year, 36 mil mm-hmm. last year that he said, no, I can get more. Well, he's probably regretting that, isn't he? I think the answer is already on the team. I'm telling you, these guys are studs. I'll add another. But each okay. one of these tight All ends right. in the first round have some I'll give you, and, and I'll give you because first round tight ends is kind of like a unicorn. There, it doesn't happen very often, and most tight ends develop you know later on. And Okay. But I would say round. I'd rather – because here, here's what the thing with the Cowboys. Now, again, it could be that, that you know, Bijan does drop that far. But the Cowboys like to draft – one of the highest players in their position, no matter where they draft, you know, you know, you follow me, that's right? That's not a bad, and that's, that's not, not a bad strategy. That's not a bad strategy. So, this is again another one of those ones that would be crazy, and I haven't dug into all the players to know how good of a draft it is. But see, guard, interior defensive line, tight ends, and inside li- middle linebackers will probably be. Fitting, oh, and kickers, fitting that yeah. category. I would yeah. rather have a lights out, run stuffing defensive lineman that can put pressure on the quarterback than a running back. I got that guy for you, but he's not in the first round. Okay. You know, it's, it's who you got? Be, um, it's going to be Keanu Benton. You probably have to get him in the third round. Mm-hmm. Check him out when you get a chance. Um, this man is a beast. Um, let me see what school. I want to say Wisconsin. Uh, interior. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I was I was looking him up, and my, my man is a beast. Um, All right. The Keanu Benton, defensive tackle out of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. They got him going bottom two, top of three. He's 6'4", 309. Uh, this dude's... He's my guy. If if I can get him in the third round, you know, it, we've talked about it at nausea. Truth mm-hmm. be told, I hope Bijan is taken. I said that last night on our mock draft. Mm-hmm. I don't think you could overlook him at 26. There's not many people on the board other than Jalen Carter, mm-hmm. um, maybe a couple of the quarterbacks. We're not drafting a quarterback. Uh, maybe one of the high-end cornerbacks. That's it. Mm-hmm. After that, um, there's no, after that you might as well move back. There's no guards that really deserve the 26th, but I'm also in the camp, Mark. That if you identify that you're taking a guard, don't mess around and then take him at 26. My only thing to you is, if Bijan is there, you're window dressing your board. You're not sticking. You know, honestly, I would like to trade down, get another top 100 pick that mm-hmm. opens up what I'm talking about, you can get another player that you may not get. That Keanu Benton is an absolute beast. They're saying he's around the 67th player. He might drift into the third round, but he won't be at us at the third. You know how that mm-hmm. goes. We're at the bottom of the draft. Right. So, you know, if Bijan is there, that's going to be a hard pick. Like I said last night, I hope he gets taken because I agree with you in theory. Mm-hmm. I'd rather get an offensive guard. I'd rather just don't mess around and go get Steve Avila. He's their number one. Mm-hmm. He's all of a sudden, I 
I mean, I touted him three weeks ago. Now all of a sudden, that that's all you hear. Now he wants to be a cowboy. You Moving start. On. You started the trend, buddy. Well, you know, I I take pride in you know my convictions and I stand by them. We'll mm-hmm. see. You know, but I also like the board, man. It, it's going to be fun, and we're going to be there. So I'm excited about that. Oh, I'm definitely excited. Okay, so we're in agreement that we don't want to get a running back. You know, here, I don't want you know, to, uh, but I'm going to take them at 26. You know what I mean? I'm not going to win to dress it. Now, I don't know how much, you know, Mike McCarthy is going to change this offense. He's saying about 30%. But I do know that – your tight end's got to be able to block and catch, and he's key. And going back through the Dallas Cowboys history, we always had great security blankets for Roger. We had great security blankets for Troy Aikman. We had them for Romo. We haven't really had one yet for Dak. Jason Witten was in the tail, you know, twilight of his career between being here and the Raiders and back. And um Dalton Schultz kind of was but I'm not sure that he was really as good as his numbers were that he was clutch when you needed him and I really would like to see that guy on this offense I would say there's eight tight ends that could fit that Mm -hmm. bill for you it it doesn't have to be a first round yeah I would I, I mean I could rattle them off to you but you don't need to know just trust me when I tell you there's all shapes and sizes, whatever flavor you like. There's some very talented tight ends as well as running backs. Mm-hmm. The guard, this is why, you know, let's pray that Bijan is gone. I don't think Bijan's going to make it to 26. I think he's going to either Tampa or mm-hmm. the Chargers right before us. That's my opinion. And we'll, as it gets closer, I'm going to put out my exact mock draft for the first round. But, um, He's not going to be there. If he is, it's it's a travesty. If he's not there, let's go get that offensive guard. So I, I know you're saying tight end, but man, let's go well, get okay. that guard. I'm just, right now. I'm saying anything, anything but, but running running right, back. Right. I, I just because the problem is it's not that he's not going to be talented and doing some really good things, but that means you're lacking in someplace else. You know, it may be that the guard is not as good as the running back. But here's the thing about a guard. You're getting double production because you're getting a guy who can pass protect. Okay? Right. Who can keep your quarterback upright. And here's a guy who hopefully can open up holes for the running back. The running back is only good for 25 plays. That guard is every play, every down. Yeah, and I think it's all a smoke screen, you know, what they're talking about. Oh, it's always bullshit. I mean, yeah. It, it better be because it's starting to scare the bejesus out of me what they're talking about doing with Tyron Smith. Uh, That's... I'm seriously thinking, people, I believe in my heart that Tyron is ultimately going to be the swing tackle for this year. Well, and I don't know how long here's the only is. way it makes sense is if you're not sure if Terrence Steele will be 100% to start the season. But then you start a few games with ago. Tyron Smith at tackle. You know, get some more experience there, right? right? And then once Terrence Steele is completely, really, really healed, then you go ahead and you can go ahead and mothball him. Mothball Tyron Smith and keep him as the swing tackle for both sides. Now he's got a little bit more up underneath his belt and ready to go. But the problem of saying, oh, well, you know, Terrence Steele's not going to move the guard because he's too valuable to tackle, then, then who's playing guard? Yeah, which ultimately, that's why I'm on board. The guards are do not run deep. You know, there's a guy, uh, Voorhees. Uh, I believe he's out of, um, where is he out of? Let's see, interior offensive line. Voorhees, he's still, they have him ranked. He's out of USC. He's the one, he's the guard out of USC. I really liked him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the one that tore his ACL at the combine. So, you know. He's like, maybe you get him later in the draft. Um, there's another guy. If it's, it, you know, if we, let's say we went Bijan, there's a guy we could get in the second round of John Michael Schmitz. He's a center out of yeah. Minnesota, but he also plays guard. And I love that pick probably just as much as the Avila pick. 
That's why I want to trade down, man. I really do. I want to get that extra pick because he could come in and play guard, right? Mm -hmm. And if Tyler Biotish does not take that next step, yeah, this this guy's a Time pro bowler. This guy's a pro, but he will be a pro bowler as mm -hmm. a center. But he can also he's big enough, and you know the tall. He's just a big man. He could play guard now, but he could also slide over to center if Tyler takes a step back. I got to give Tyler credit. He mm -hmm. stepped up, but he's not Pro Bowl. He's averaged to slightly above, but he's not a Pro Bowl. Well, here's the good thing, at least for the Cowboys. With all the moves they've made, they still are sitting with $13.1 million of cap space with another 10.9 coming June right. 1st. And they can still get more money if they want to. They've been very logist uh, look, look, no, I'm using the wrong logistically. Word. No, is that what you're no. um, Logistic? No, just like okay, it's, frugal. Yeah. They've been real frugal, frugal, frugal with their money. Right. I mean, getting Hankins back for what one and a half million dollars? Suing people? Huh? Litigious? Oh no. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. they've been very, you yeah. know, yeah. cat boy. You yeah. know, is always they looking always for are. for good value and stuff. Um, but they've brought back the 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 main pieces. I don't know if they're going to still try and bring back Carlos Watkins or not, or if they're just going to move on. But the fact that they've gotten back Hankins, that they, they brought back, back. Leighton Van Der Esch, that they got Donovan Wilson back, you know, the fact that um, you got Brandon Cooks, you got Gallimore, I mean Gilmore added, and then Ronald Jones, that you've added these pieces and, and haven't lost. I mean, you lost Dalton Schultz and even brought back Cooper Rush. <laughs> surprise, surprise. We may bring back Zeke, if you believe that one. Well. I know. That's a different. I'm just saying that's the rumor. That well, here's here's a th here's where it's kind of funny. Okay, I looked at it like this, and I said, if I'm the Cowboys, I say Zeke, if we just let you go, we're gonna have to pay five and a half million dollars in dead money this year. Let's take that number and let's say we're gonna put the veteran minimum on top of that, and that's what you play for this year, and that's the new contract. Honestly, basically. I that's what it would be if he ends up coming back. I can't see them saying, oh, we're going to give you $5 million. No. no I would say 1.2. I'll throw him a 1.5. I would do that for him, mm -hmm. but I don't know that they would. And that's not like giving some, you know, I mean, again, people, just remember, we paid the man $70 million. Can you spare a dollar? <laughs> yeah, we, we paid him $70 million. So Zeke should not be up Second there highest paid Running back in NFL history, Adrian so, Peterson's number one. You know, and if Jerry likes to throw it in Zeke's face. Basically, well, you know, Zeke who? <laughs> well, you know that that you know, they emptied everything for Zeke. He emptied everything for the club, type of deal. Mm -hmm. um, I would like it because ultimately, everybody knows my stand. I do not want to resign Pollard long, you know, long term. Mm -hmm. I don't. I want to use Pollard this year and then let him go. Now that's. I know that sounds mean, and but that's just the business, man. I'm sorry, but that's a running back. I would like to bring Zeke back, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, get Pollard more of a load. You have Ronald Jones, and that way we don't have to draft a Rico running back Dattle. high. And then next year, maybe Pollard could go. Zeke, if he wants to come back or whatever. But, you know, draft one in the third round, man. I'm good with that. I just want to stick to the board, though. I mean, if somebody drops, man, we got to take them. So I know I'm talking out both sides of my neck, but you got to mm -hmm. stick to your draft board. You can't let what happened in the past. I mean, what if it's Barry Sanders? Now you could say, well, Barry Sanders never won nothing. Is it his fault? No, it's the team. We didn't put anybody around Barry Sanders. <laughs> didn't have the offensive line or the quarterback right, or the coach. Right. But I think he's, if you ask most people who's, a, you know, like one of the best ever, they say Barry Sanders and he didn't win squat. Mm -hmm. You know, I love Emmett. You see, I got Emmett's jersey. I love Emmett, but we all know what he was running. Emmett will be at the autograph signing show, although his <laughs> signature it's is like too fitty. Right? Too fitty, yeah. It's a yeah. little too rich for my blood. So, but uh, I just yeah. wish these guys would take the uh, yeah the ear pods uh, yeah the air pods out of their ear and say hello to you, you know, and shake your hand. I won't name names, but yeah, you know, these young guys don't have the uh, the savvy that they these older guys do right yeah yep well saturday i will be at the chantilly autograph signing show and the thing that's amazing is um 
the difference between the day's players and the ones in the past. It's crazy. The ones in the past are just happy that you remember and come by and see them. A lot of the ones now are kind of like, "Mm, yeah. It gives me goosebumps when you, and I know we're getting off topic here, but when you talk about when you gave uh, Roger Stahlback a, uh, a, like, drive to the airport, I believe. Oh, no, I drove him from the Hall of Fame to to his hotel. hotel. Oh, my God. That, because, you know, (laughs) my father was in the military. He was a big Roger fan. Yeah. You know, and my brother. It's just, come on, man. That's that's what it's about, you Mm -hmm. know. I remember meeting Butch Johnson outside of the Veterans Stadium. Nobody knew who he was. It was back early 80s. You know, Butch Johnson and my dad was talking. He was the only one who knew who the hell Butch Johnson was. We're out by the team bus. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there's Butch Johnson. You know, I knew who he was, but just he was very personable. Now you can't get nowhere close, man. You mm-hmm. can't get close to these boys. Yeah, and it's kind of like, you know, I'm not going to name names, but now you have a lot of them that, you know, like I would get like Joe Boo jerseys and get them signed or, you know, T-shirts that are Joe Boo's and, you know, to give them away and stuff. And now you've got a bunch of them that are like, no, it has to be X licensed, but you know, this, that, and the yeah. other. So you can't get like you want. And You're then, paying your money. You should get anything you want signed. Uh, you but start, that's not how it works. You start looking at, you know, $175 and the guys aren't even looking up from the table. You know, <laughs> I, I tell you, yeah, right, you know, right. I'm not a, I'm not a baseball fan, but if you've ever been to an autograph signing show and you see Cal Ripken, Cal Ripken is literally spending five minutes with you. You're coming back behind the table. You know, yeah, he's yeah, calling yeah, your yeah. friends and, you know, and it's like, wow, these guys get it, you know? And then you get the young ones like, mm, you know, no pictures. What? Well, that's when you feel like saying, it's people. like, I just that's gave you $150 I, and if you're making like here, 10 million a year. If, you know, if like without the fans, Mm-hmm. You could be the most talented person in the world. Nobody cares, but you yeah. need us, just like we need you. But I mean, it's a new breed, man. Some get it, some don't. Yeah. Well, four weeks from tonight. I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm right excited. now, the I'm draft so will be open. We will be there, and we will probably be already on the second pick. We got a long Second night for us before we get there. Oh, man. And what if we start trading, moving back and stuff? I, I would like that because there's nobody I have to have. So, you know, I want all the picks, man. I want more bullets. Let's go. <laughs> I want more bullets. Okay. Well, Brian, as always, I appreciate you. Tell everybody about your channel and where to Come find on, you man. and, and when you on. on. Game Time Brian. You guys know on Twitter, Game Time Brian. On YouTube, you know, a Game Time Brian. We got there a show go. on Primetime Phil on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Let's go, baby. And you're going to Kansas City. Kansas right. City, here we come. That's right. We go. We, we coming. Woo! We coming, and we coming hungry, too. Okay. We want yeah, some right? barbecue. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to stop in St. Louis, and then we're going to compare it to Kansas City. All right, yeah, well, we definitely need to do that. All right, so I'm Mark Holmes, of course, of my man Prime Time. I'm sorry, Game, game time. time. Why did I got what? Look at the sign, man. Just yeah, just remember, <sighs> Game Time. Oh, sorry, right, man. Sorry, right, I love. You, I, I hate to say it, but all you white guys look alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, shit, you can't say that, can you? I just did. I fire Howie. Fucking fire, motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot!